So the question today is, uh, why do we have to wait between meat and milk? Uh, it's a question I think that bothers us all the time, and um, it's we need we need to give some some uh, hint of an explanation. Uh, first of all, we have to always remember whatever explanation we give is just one little percentage of the whole explanation. We don't know any full explanation of any of the commandments, whether it's a chok or it's a mishpat, a decree or a judgment, a law. Every law in Judaism goes much beyond um, what we can think. We have to remember that if it says in the Talmud, if the Torah had not been given, we would have been obligated to know how to behave properly from nature, from the way the world works. Um, so, however, what we have to understand is the reason why we need the Torah. Why do I need the Torah? I can, can, I can figure out everything on my own. No, it's not like that. You can figure out certain morals on your own, basic principles, maybe like not to kill or stuff like that. And even then, just the refinement from the animals, certain things like that. But how to really be beyond animals, to be like a real human being, holy, all that, and how to deal with questions that are beyond our understanding, like who needs to be killed, who this needs to be who doesn't need to be killed. If you have two people on the respirator and there's only one respirator, who do you give the respirator to? All those things are, are can only be answered by God. We are, as human beings, how can we decide such a thing? Life and death. So that's why we need the Torah. And um, therefore, it's important to understand that everything that the Torah gives are not have to go beyond what, as human beings, we can think. Otherwise, what do we in the Torah? Everything that Torah Hashem gives, it's beyond. And, but, however, we still have an obligation to search in it. God wants us to search, understand why we do everything we do, to get the messages, the different many messages, so that we can expand our consciousness, our understanding, our spirituality, and our morals. So, why do we wait between meat and milk? That was a long introduction, but I think it was important to remember with all the questions we ask. So, one of the answers, the way I understand it, with whatever I learned, is that when you eat meat, you're doing something, you're, you're enjoying something that came from an act of death. Technically, originally, we were not supposed to kill any animals. We were in Gan Eden, until Noah, we were commanded to eat from all the vegetation. That's why, by the way, I mean nature, <laughs> to connect more. So we were supposed to only eat vegetables, things from nature, fruits, trees from the garden. So, but we're not supposed to eat meat. What happened is that when mankind became corrupted, we are with our sin, we affected all of nature and we affected the animals. Why the animals had to die? Just like men, because as human beings, if we are the, the, what we don't understand is we affect everything around us, all of nature, plants and animals and everything. So now we need to rectify that. And one of the way to elevate the world is through eating. However, it has to be done the right way, with the right intention, the right type of animal, the right way to kill it. It can be pain involved. So, I'm to, one of the reasons why we eat meat is because we need to elevate the meat. The meat transforms into human flesh, and with our human flesh we do good actions. By doing those good actions, the meat is elevated. But why do we wait? The waiting is because since even though I have a good intention to elevate the meat, to elevate the food, I still have done an act of killing. Even though it's with a good intention, it's still an act of killing. There's a little bit of cruelty in it. When we say that Moshiach come, 
that we, according to some opinion, we go back to become vegetarian completely because there's no need to elevate anything anymore from the physical, everything has been elevated. The, the, we should live in a world of peace where there's no predator. You don't need to kill in order to eat. Do you understand that you have to kill life in order to, for you to live? It's almost a fixation, a rectification for the fact that we as humans kill all the time. And for the wrong reason. And so I have to pause. And the rabbis felt that the six hours were the necessary pause. The different opinions, how long to wait, but the most stringent opinion, actually the most stringent opinion is to wait 24 hours, 24 hours according to Arizal. He will not, the Arizal Hakadot will not eat meat and milk on the same day. So we pause, we say, I did an act of killing, yes it was for wrong, for the right reason, but it has to affect me, I have to understand I make an action that kills, it has some cruelty in it, I brought death. So when I, when I do that, it helps me like a therapeutic thing after a trauma it's like whoa you gotta pause and think about things what you did how did it affect you are you doing things for the right reason are you elevating what you kill are you using life or are you killing in order to create more life so we pause and we only go back to milk with to life once we have a, a pause now remember the, the opinion that we majority of Jews have is to wait six hours six full hours Six full hours plus one second, plus one minute, which means that we go in the seventh hour. So the seventh hour is a hint, in my opinion, of sitting Shiva. So there's a, there's a micro um, uh, morning. There's wait we more for seven days. It's a micro uh, 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 sitting Shiva, and we wait and we mourn the fact that we had to act, do an action of killing. And which rectifies the original sin when we had to we we kill and we stole and we did things that are corrupt, and, and now we have to fix it. But it's also to make sure that we stay uh, pure and, and and loving and full of life. According to the Arizo, we're not even supposed to kill a fly. No things should be killed. We should not break a tree. We should break a branch. We should not. Uh, we're not allowed to kill fruit trees. But no animals, when you, even killing a spider should hurt you. Anything you kill, you're doing an act of what right you have to kill a fly or, 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 or an elephant or anything. You're master of life and death, you decide what gets killed or not. No, only, only God decides that type of thing. So we have to stay super sensitive. And therefore, being a vegetarian is extremely good. The only reason Jews eat meat, one of the only reasons Jews eat meat is because we need to elevate the world understand that elevation needs to come uh, uh, in this world but we're only allowed to do it when we have the right intention meaning according to um, Kabbalists you should only eat meat at specific moment when your intention is very clear that you want to eat it to elevate it to connect to a high level the Aristotle say that in this meat sometimes they are souls even plants actually but in the meat specifically there are souls and they need rectification. If we don't eat with a proper intent, we don't kill the animal with proper intent, those souls cannot be elevated or reincarnated in a, in, a, in a human body later on. So, this is one of the, uh, it's a beautiful lesson. It has nothing to do with digestion. What you're gonna, so when you drink milk and eat, you're allowed to eat meat almost right away after, so they, they, it's in your stomach. No, you have the meat and the taste of meat, the taste of death, the taste of blood, the taste of, 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 of what you had to kill is in there and it lasts about six hours for, for the taste to go away. And one added meaning of six hours, six is a connection. Vav, which is the numerical value for, for, for the, uh, of six, because the sixth letter of the Hebrew alphabet, it means hook. Vav means hook, it's a connection. We use Vav to connect two words. It means and in, 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 in Hebrew. So six, we go beyond six hours, six hours, one minute. We make sure we don't connect that death with life. We have passed the, 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 the experience of killing, of something a little bit cruel in us as human beings, and, and we make sure we disconnect it so that we start with death. The last meaning I would like to add is, that is connected to, to Kabbalah, is the left side is Gvura, correspond to the red, it will correspond to meat, blood, and white is chesed, is life, is love. 
when we we usually in Judaism we start everything with the right we put our shoes first on the right we we dress everything we dress up with we should start with the right we do a blessing with the right we're supposed to do tzedakah with the right because right is always the symbol of love everything we do the way we look at things we should look uh, uh, judge positively we should do things with love act with love always first the left represents restrictions judgment uh, limitations so if you do an act which is eating meat it's an act where you start with the left and therefore you have to be very careful you have to be aware of that the right say whoa whoa careful you're doing something that has very judgment or very strict very uh, uh, um, uh, very harsh so to speak make sure you let it go little by little and then you and then you can go back to to love it's like almost saying like if you're angry you know or, or, or you, you want my rabbi says if you have words understand that there are words that can kill you have to wait understand the damage you can done with that and 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 until you're ready to speak good words so so the idea is being aware of that uh, intensity of the danger of the left the danger of being too strict we sin the adam arishon sin because he was too strict he posed a limitation a gvura a, a, a getter um, a fence for his wife because he didn't trust her and that fence destroyed everything he didn't love her much he didn't trust her enough and we have to be therefore very careful so this is one of the many reasons some of the many reasons why we wait between meat and milk so you understand it's not just a physical biological nutritional phys uh, you know uh, thing it's not just for health it's spiritual Actually, the Rambam say it has to do with, and Kabbalah they say it has to do with sorcerers in in in, in the, the, the magician like witches or whatever who use the magic and and sorcery. They will use meat and milk together with some pagan practice. So that's one of the reasons why we we don't mix meat and milk um, beside the wedding. So so there are a lot a lot of things which is much deeper than what we can think. So next time you eat meat for the right reason, remember that there's a message of learning to be more loving, learning more careful, not to be too strict, to, to you know, when you're a kid, it's easy to kill uh, an ant because it's small, but if someone would kill a dog in front of the kid, he'll be like, crying and be terrified. Why? Is the ant less important than the dog? This is an act of cruelty. When we grow older, we become more sensitive to it, and 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 we have to to be aware of uh, those differences. Breaking a branch. Some people they don't feel anything. It's no problem. Just cutting a trees, killing animal. People are not sensitive. We are in lack of love. As I always say, uh, nowadays, Judaism is a rehab for love we for a rehab to learn how to give we are here to all be in harmony to love each other and to make a world that is full of life full of milk of growth and any action that we do that is limited that creates death that like killing eating meat we have to be extremely extremely careful with it and think and meditate to not be affected um, and expand in that in that direction all right so think a little bit of that and and that'll be food for thoughts you eat some uh, some thoughts that's uh, much better all right all the best